How's it going everybody? This is Van Damage here. Uh, this is going to be my final build video for a while. Um, I apologize for that. I'm getting actually in the middle of getting ready to move and I'm probably going to be without a lot of my tools and stuff for a few months. Um, I'm going to try and do some small things here and there that I can do without re the requirement of major power tools, but uh, as far as my major builds, this is going to be my last one. Uh, so any of you guys that have been subscribed to my channel have seen this guy. Uh, this is a small Raspberry Pi portable gaming system build that I did a few weeks, months ago. Uh, as you can see, I got the Raspberry Pi, the little fan. Yeah, I'm not going to get into this one because this isn't the main one that I want. But just to give you an idea of what you're about to see. Uh, this was basically the prototype for me to get started on this. It was a, you know, how can I build something, put a screen on it, center it, you know, just the practice. And this is one of my favorite ones. I love going around playing with that. So I'm going to move that over here, kind of next to it. So you can see how small that is compared to this. This is my gaming system. This is the one that I will probably use most of the time. And here it is. So what I did was I custom cut all the plexiglass. This is all plexiglass. I got a black fogged piece of plexiglass for the top part. Uh, as you can see, Darth Vader, you know, uh, it's very reflective. I've had to shut all the lights off in my house and open a window in order to try and get this done right. But, you know, you can see here, this is a uh, all cut with a Dremel and a drill. This is probably the worst cut right here. I hate how that looks. Uh, but yeah, measured all this out, added the plexiglass, some brackets on it, and custom built this. Um, not too happy with a couple of the cuts. I started getting frustrated because it would, you know, I'd cut, 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 it wouldn't fit. So, you know, you cut one spot, it fits there, then all of a sudden another spot doesn't want to work, so it was a pain. But let's get down to the guts inside here and see what's going on. Uh, now normally, this is not just sitting in here all loose where, you know, you can pop it out like this. Uh, I've got three of these L brackets that will normally sit, you know, here here and then one in the very back because sometimes this wire will snag and try to pop it out and then I just bolt those to the box itself not the plexiglass because I shattered one of these doing that and the first one I shattered trying to drill all these screw holes you see here but normally I hold it in together with you know a few L brackets that just holds it in place it's a pretty tight fit anyways but you know it's just to make sure nothing flops around and breaks so let's get this out of here and see what's going on. Um, as you can see, here is the Raspberry Pi 3. You can kind of see it behind the fog, you know, plexiglass. Uh, this is the Ethernet cable. So if I need to do any updates or add any games to the Raspberry Pi, I can hook up through there, connects directly to it, and then I can do whatever I need on it. I have four USB panel mounts that connect to the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, what's in there is the Raspberry Pi 3, uh, I want to say the 3B, I can't remember exactly which one it is, but, you know, it's one of the, it's the newest Raspberry Pi they have at the time of, you know, building this box. Uh, let's see, as you can see up here, this round circle here, I drilled out holes for a speaker. Uh, I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, those, these are, was it double-sided taped and then hot glued on because whenever I double side tape it and don't hot glue it, it falls apart. And then it rattles around in the box. So let me switch hands with the camera so I can more easily do this. Um, and, you know, flipping it over, you can kind of see, this is a little difficult to do yet, check out my turtle pants. But you can see more of how I did everything inside. Uh, you saw that knob on the other side. This is the volume control. I was able to add a small audio board that is that provides oh was it's either five or ten watts to these speakers here. It's somewhere between five and ten. But yeah, it provides enough power. Like I can watch movies on this thing. I can play video games. It and you know it sounds it the sound is crystal clear. Uh, these pegs here, you probably see, these are where the monitor board used to sit, but then I ran into the issue of the HDMI cable not being long enough, so I had to move it behind the monitor. Uh, this board right here, I can't really show you 
how exactly it looks. You'll be able to see what it does whenever I turn this on here in a minute. But this right here is a DC conversion board. So what it does is it takes in whatever DC power you have. I can't remember what the board's rated to, but it's between like 3 volts and I want to say 24 volts. Uh, it might be a lot higher than that, but it has this blue thing here with a screw on it that you can adjust the outgoing voltage. So I was able to adjust this to a 5.2, 5.4, and that provides the voltage that is required for the Raspberry Pi and enough voltage to power the audio board, which is, they both run on 5 volts, so it was easier to do it that way. Um, you know, I could have just powered this directly off of the Raspberry Pi board, but that's a lot of wires that you have to get onto the pins here, and it has the tendency to get loose, so I just, you know, soldered the wire here, soldered the wire there, and then inserted it into this guy here. Uh, this right here, it is actually an HDMI splitter box, so you know, you push the button, and it'll switch from output 1 or output 2. Um, I do have another HDMI cable, and but I'm missing the HDMI panel mount. So once I get that in, I can upgrade this so you can hook it up to the box and to a TV. That way you're not just using this 10-inch screen right here. Uh, but so far, this is just kind of sitting in here, kind of, you know, flopping around whatnot. It's cool. You know, they chill. it's chill. Um... But yeah, there's not much difference here. Uh, here's the input. I used a 2.1 by 5.5 uh, power adapter, a uh, female power adapter, and then just soldered it to this board here, and then all the power goes wherever it needs to go. The screen is actually hooked directly up to this because the screen can run off of 3 to 24 volts. So I didn't want to take away... This, on, this board only puts out 3 amps. And because it only puts out that much, and the board itself requires two and a half amps for you know running, and this right here requires like next to nothing, and this monitor here requires almost two itself. I couldn't run everything out of the five volts, so I just you know here, and then you know, ran it wherever it goes. Uh, I'm probably not explaining it exactly right. But that is, you know, I tested it out a few times, and that is the conclusion I came to. I am not 100% knowledgeable in electronics. I can put things together. I can do the math to make it work, but I don't know how to explain it properly. So if anybody watching this video knows how to explain why, you know, the 3-volt output couldn't power the Pi, the audio, and the uh, monitor, please do explain it. I'm terrible at that stuff. But, okay, so that's how the brain of it works. Uh, here's the monitor, or the screen. Uh, like I said earlier, it's a 10-inch screen. Um, I just used double-sided adhesive tape, and I attached it to a piece of plexiglass, measured out the sides here, and tried to get it right, but as you can kind of see up here, my... I was getting frustrated trying to get it to fit because it was measured correctly, but for some reason it just wouldn't slide in, and then I found out that it's angled a little bit on the inside of the lid, and that's why it just wouldn't work. Um, I do have a control board here, uh, but I can only use the IR. I don't like cutting into this stuff too much because it'll crack. It, this is very, you know, it's, uh, what is the word, friable, frangible? Well, one of those two words, but it's easily cracked uh, because of the thickness of it, which is two millimeters. Uh, this down here is a 3 mil piece of plexiglass, so it's a little sturdier, not by much, but it is a little sturdier, and I was able to do all my drilling. I The only thing that started cracking was whenever I put the audio in, which is right, yeah. Uh, but, okay, so I've shown you, I've given you a quick rundown of, well, 10 minutes isn't exactly quick, but I gave you a little bit of a rundown on, you know, what went into this. So I'm sure some of you... Because 90% of the videos I ever see on these things is the Pi running. They never explain how it works. But I do the how it works at the end of my videos. So as you can see here, 5.2 volts. And voila! It is, my system runs RetroPi. Um, I did try some of the other ones out there. Uh, there's, not, there's nothing innately wrong with them. It's just RetroPi is pretty much my operating system of choice right now. 
Um, anybody who's looking to get into Raspberry Pi builds, there are tons of operating systems out there. Don't just go with RetroPie because I'm using it. Uh, go check out the other ones. Try them out. It's easy to you know create the image and you know just play with it for a little bit before you finalize your build. Uh, but RetroPie is my favorite one for what I use it for. Um, later on, I oh no, I forgot to connect my controller. I'm not going through all that, so I'm going to do number one thing you never do, which is just unplug it. Never do that. That is the worst thing you could do. You could corrupt your SD card. But considering I have about 50 of them laying around, I'm not too worried about corrupting the SD card. I can always do another one. So we get it up. We get it running again. Um, I'm using, an, while this is loading, I can tell you this. I use a Super Nintendo controller because 90% of the time I'm using this to play, you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, all those kind of games. You know, the ones I grew up playing and loved. Um, but yeah, as you can see, here's the uh, the 5.2. Uh, the uh, DC converter board it actually has a button that you can press, and it will show you the incoming voltage, and then you press it again, and it shows you the outgoing voltage. So depending on what you want to look at. Uh, why I like this over the uh, smaller board that just doesn't show you anything going out you have to use a voltmeter to check it out but why I like this is because eventually I'm gonna build one of these out of a bigger box or maybe not necessarily this but you know something else and this is gonna be awesome because I can set I can use this to set my outgoing voltage but because I want to use a battery bank on it eventually where this is self-sufficient I don't have to plug it into the wall I can click that button and I can watch the drain of my battery which is why I like it. So, okay, here we go. You can kind of focus. There we go. So here's the RetroPie operating system, which is something I love. I'll link a video explaining how to install all this later. But, okay, so you can see scrolling up and down, you know, nothing special. You can hear the fan whirring around. Let me, let me, let me turn this up a little bit. Yeah, sound, baby. Okay. So as you can hear, this does have sound. I'm not going to jump into the games. Well, maybe Bomberman. Um, but yeah, here's the HDMI and the power supply for the monitor. But yeah, this... The speakers, they are small, but they get loud. They get pretty loud. And, you know, I've got it turned ha about a quarter of the way up and you can barely hear it but whenever I'm watching movies on Cody uh, it actually gets loud so you know it depends on what you're doing with the volume with the speakers that will determine how loud it actually gets it's not really cons it's not really you know the same all the way around but yeah you can see that so let me exit but yeah uh, this is my Raspberry Pi build I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Let me flip. Oh, shit. Sorry. Give you a little bit of a ride here. Okay. So, I hope you guys really enjoyed this build. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. It took me about two or three days to finish it. Um, but I think it was well worth it. Um, you know, I'm sorry this video ran a little long, but I wanted to try and get all of this in one. Uh, as I said at the beginning, this is my last build for... It's going to be a couple of months before I can do anything else. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to be, unfortunately, I'm going to have to live with my parents for a little while. And uh, until I can get settled, I'm coming back from Japan. So, it's going to be a little while before I can get out on my own, get my uh, get all my household goods moved to where I'm going to be. Uh, but hopefully, I can still bring you guys some, you know, do-it-yourself videos. I do have a speaker build that I'm wanting to do, so I might send that ahead of myself leaving. That way, whenever it gets there, all I have to do is find some key parts that I need, and then build it in a couple of hours um but yeah uh this this is the direction i'm going in and i'm starting to really really love doing these builds um you know if you guys you know as with every video i do i'm always asking you know if there's something you guys want to see please please put it in a comment i would love you know to try other kinds of builds and you know, different things that I can do because I don't want to just be stuck with, well, he does boom boxes, now he's doing Raspberry Pi builds. It's kind of getting old now. There's only so much you can do. 
So, you know, if you guys have a suggestion for something you'd like to see me try to build, um, I will always look into it. I will try, research it, see what I can do. And if it's something I, can, I think I can build, I will build it. I'll give you a shout-out. Um, I also want to say thank you. I have, uh, the last time I checked YouTube, which was about, was last night sometime, I think I'm up to 377 subscribers in less than a year, which, you know, that's not a whole lot of people, but to me it means a lot. Like, you know, my channel's starting to grow, I'm starting to get into more complex builds, and I'm hoping that, you know, I can start doing things and explain it in a way that is easy for people to understand. I'm not the most intelligent person myself, so if I can show you guys, you know, how to do something like this, yeah, it takes a few days to do it, it takes a little while to get used to doing, to building these things, but anybody can do this. Like, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I'm, my friends will tell you I'm not. <laughs> I'm a kind of a. I'm kind of out there a little bit, but you know, these are easy, easy, easy to do. So if you have any questions on how to build it, any questions on you know how I did any specific part of it, and if it's something that requires a little bit more in depth than just you know a quick oh well you attach this to this and then you're done, you know I'll do a video on it. You know just ask me questions. I will still be able to post videos between now and my next build. But as far as actually doing builds, no, not so much. So if you guys need explanations on anything, let me know. I will figure it out for you. I will give you the resources you need as far as research-wise. Uh, but you know what? This video is running very long. So as always, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Share this to all your friends. If you guys have questions about it, please ask. Um, and as always, have you know... Have a good day. Bye.